It's your Marty, signing in. Welcome to part 17 of the C++ and SFML tutorial platform tutorial series. Phew, that's a mouthful. <sighs> so, in the last tutorial, what we covered is we finished up the sprite mapper, so now it's going to be easier to use sprite sheets in our game. In this tutorial, we're going to get, we're going to get, hopefully, some collision detection with a platform that has an image to it, hopefully. One thing you might notice is that I have ditched my Windows 10, which, yes, I'm very happy to say that I left that rotting, sinking ship that they call Windows 10. But anyways, we have a lot to do, so let's get started programming. So, the first thing that I've did, so the first thing we want to do really is we're going to create, go to our report project directory, and we're going to create a folder called assets. Because what we had before was we had data and we had all of our assets, like our, our font, font files and our images inside there. But that, that's not really a folder for that. That belongs in assets folder. And inside data, that's where we're going to put like stuff like our player data, like, you know, if we have a save game function, that's what that's for, which I am planning on having. So anyway, just create an uh, assets folder, copy whatever it is you have in your data folder, copy that over to assets. So open up your project file and let's begin programming. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to restructure a bit the way that we're using images and textures to with our with our classes. So like the way we're doing it right now is we've created our, uh, we create our object right here. Uh, we create our sprite down here somewhere. And then what we do is, is that is when we're drawing it here, which we should, but we're moving it here, which we shouldn't. We want to move that inside inside the player class to keep it more modular. To keep modularity, we don't want to keep that move that over to the player class. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take out, I'm not going to be, I, th I think the first thing we, I think we all want to do is get rid of that hideous snail. Because I, I, I just don't think we're going to have fun programming a game about a little blue snail. I think so. What I've done is I've created a few different textures over the weekend when I had a bit of time. So, in essence, um, if you guys want to know how I create textures, like the way I do it, um, just let me comment down in the comment section. And if I, if I think that there's interest in it, I'll do a video on that. So, I've created uh, the one I'm interested in now is platforms and score one and player one. And if you're wondering why these guys here have of uh, rainbow faces and stuff like that is because my little sisters they came down here and they're like hey ooh that game looks like fun marty can i can i play on it i'm like okay and they're like well we need to have more than one player so you know and then they they picked up their own calls for everything but and they had a great time so anyway so anyway let's go back into the code so first let's, let's get rid of that so we don't we're not gonna be using snails i just a game about snails sounds kind of weird and Boring. We're gonna want something different. So let's start by accessing the texture class. So texture, and we're gonna create a texture called. We're gonna call this player, player and texture one. In the line of semicolon, and then we're gonna go player, texture, player. Whoops, texture one, and then dot load from file in order to load an image to that texture. I'm gonna some some I'm gonna string. Inside the string, we're gonna go with assets. This is where minus located assets forward slash and then it's in images forward slash and it's player underscore one dot png is what it is now if you don't know how what type of file it is that's okay it's fairly simple to do you just go to your file and wherever it is right click on it and hit properties from there i'll just tell you pretty quick it's a png file is what mine is right there you can use jpeg you can use gif tons of different stuff with this and all i'm just gonna stick with as with uh png because it's simple and it's it's simple enough and gives me high enough quality for one So anyway, in that line with semicolon, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a sprite with our, this, open up the sprite class, and we're going to call this player sprite one because we're going, if we're when we're, we're planning on having an animation function, because of that we're going to have more than one sprite. So and then open up some parameters. Parameters we want to give it is just the texture we're going to use, which ours is player texture one. In that line with semicolon, hit enter. And actually, from there, it's all good. So now, what we want to do is we want to copy these lines of code here, uh, the player class and player object. Take those lines of codes out, and I should probably should probably have copied them. But you're going to want to write those lines underneath where we where we set up all of our sprites. Call under there. So, so what was it? It was player, player class, and then player class, and then player, and then we're going to go with OBJ instead of object because. It's a lot shorter to write. We're gonna like give it a parameter. The parameter give it is the uh, is the sprite, the, the actual image for, the actual image for our class. So that in our case is sprite one, and that's all we're gonna need for the parameters that we're gonna give it. So right now we're, we're giving our argument. But we've gotta tell it it's expecting a little yes. So we're gonna say we're gonna have to scroll up into the plot player class right here and we're gonna say hey in the constructor you're gonna be expecting a guess so make a cake or something like that so sprite and then space sprite should be good for now 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to create another, we're going to create a variable. So actually an object is what it should be called. And then we're right here, sprite, and we're going to call this image. So this is our image and then with semicolon. And then what we're going to do in our constructor is, because you see the way the constructor works is when the class gets called, it runs once automatically. Once it's done running, it's done. It doesn't run anymore. So this is the perfect spot to assign initial values. So image should equal sprite and then with semicolon. And that actually should be all good. Take out that extra unneeded white spaces. And now, for now, that's pretty good. Just scrolling down, and I notice we have CL. We're not going to want to print anything out on the screen yet. Just keep us scrolling, and right until we get about right here, right here. So we also have app. Um, I want to take out app because I'm not a fan of the whole the tap the app thing, that whole thing. I'm not really a fan of that. I'm it, with me. It's a program. It's I'm a I'm a programmer, not an apper. So window, and this is not. An app this is a window so i'm gonna call it a window right now and then now just replace i'm just gonna replace app instead of app i'm gonna go with window this is really preference if if you like app of course go with app this is just my preference so i took all the app got the, got the app crap out so now what we're going to do is snail sprite no longer exists so what we haven't said is we have player obj dot image that looks awesome eh? we've got dot image so this is using image that's part of the player class to again keep modularity so then uh again right here we don't have player object anymore it's player obj to keep it a bit more short and take out those it's player obj again player obj and snail sprite again no longer exists so we're going to want to go with player which whoops no typos player obj and then dot image is what we're going to move save that and compile that and hopefully this should work and no, it did not work quite full, and that's because we failed to load an image, because I see now, we made a mistake. We had a typo. Uh oh So, the typo is just an S, right there. Save it, run that now. So there we go, so I have a swordsman on the screen, a like requested. So now we're gonna get the, we're gonna get the platform class working, actually. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up another texture with texture, whoops, texture, and we're gonna call this texture here, uh, platform sprite sheet because that's what it is it's a sprite sheet that has full sprites so that's what we're going to call it to keep it concise because then we can cut out now we can actually use the sprite map we created in the last couple videos to actually cut out a sprite out of it so then we're going to want to go uh what else should we do now we go uh, platform that's a long variable so dot load from file one thing about long variables it's okay to have a long variable if you're not going to be using it very often something like um y, po y position if you're going to be using a lot shorter and concise is better if you're not going to be using it very often it's okay if it's a bit longer that's just my opinion on it, of course you can have your own opinion i'm no prof i'm not, not a professional i think heck I'm not even out of high school yet anyway so open this parameters what i was going to give it is we're going to go with uh assets and then forward slash images whoops we forgot to open a string we gotta open up a string because it, it reads it as a string so assets and forward slash images and then uh, forward slash again and we're gonna call it this one here is platforms i believe it is could be wrong platforms underscore one dot png so we could load it up and now what we want to do is we want to create a sprite so we'll just go access the sprite class with sprite and we're gonna call this one we're gonna call this because this this sprite i know is like a earthy sprite so we're gonna call earth sprite and we're gonna call this one because we're gonna have more than one by the time this game is done on this parameters the parameters we're gonna give it is a texture which is platform sprite sheet and then hit enter and now right now it's just taking the whole sprite sheet and saying that's your whole sprite image that's not what we want to do we want to cut out a particular sprite out of the sprite sheet so do that you name access the name of your sprite which is earth sprite sheet one and then you go dot set and then you're gonna to want to go uh, what is it texture set texture and then rect so this is setting the, the rectangle of the texture. And what's premise? Premise you want to give it is see. Well, first you want to say it's an integer rectangle argument is which we're going to give it. And what's more parameters? Premise we're going to give it is now this is where we use the sprite map we made the last video. Um, and we're not going to be dealing with too many sprite like too many texture sprites right now. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it in the next tutorial while I get that set up. So, anyways, I already know what this is. It's going to be um zero. It's going to be the zero. It's in the top left hand corner of the screen wherever that is on the camera and it's 15 by 15 pixels big so 15 by 15 pixels and that line with semicolon so now we've created this awesome texture and now we want to create now we actually want to use our platform class so just go platform class and then space and we're going to call this one platform obj opens parameters the parameters we're going to give it is the sprite we're going to give it which 
Ours is, what do we call this? Our uh, Earth Sprite 1. And that's not the only one. That's not the only parameter we're going to give it. Before that, we're going to give it an initial X and Y position, which 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down. For now, as a test, it's pretty good. It sounds pretty solid to me. So now we've given it some guests. We've given it some arguments. So I actually got to, got to tell it's expecting some arguments. Ah, so see in the last tutorial, we did say we told it was expecting some integer arguments, but we, we also got to say that it's expecting a sprite argument. So sprite, and we should call this just sprite for now. It's fairly concise enough. And instead of instead of having a small p, a big big p looks better because again, it's just keeping it consistent with my programming style, which mine is just simply uh, small for the first little word, all small, and then the the beginning letter of the second word big and not just exposition we will go with init exposition so we know that it's in it exposition and i'm just gonna make make mine fairly make it readable and nice like that in it so that's the initial exposition and y position so now here also right here in our public we're gonna create a sprite so we're gonna call a sprite image keeps pretty similar to actually what we did with player class and that one with semicolon and now in the constructor group it's the perfect spot to assign initial values to values so then we go image equals sprite sprite there we go and then I have a semicolon and then we're gonna actually, we're gonna set the position of the sprite so we just go image and then dot set position position opens parameters and the parameters we're gonna give it is init and then x position and init y position and that line with a semicolon so if we save this it, uh, this isn't going to be helpful unless we're drawing the actual sprite so let's scroll down into our code all the way down and right here right where right when we draw before we draw our, our player image we're going to draw the platform image so window dot draw and opens parameters the parameters we're going to give it is was platform obj dot image and then with a semicolon hopefully it'll be all good so we'll compile and run that and i see that our uh, line 95 right here extra parenthesis you don't want to have those so and save that try that one more time so there we go so we see we have an eeny weeny little sprite on the screen perfect except it's way too small that's for sure so let's scale it so scroll up back to back to platform the platform class we're going to create an integer and this integer is going to be a uh, scale so and that was semicolon and now what we want to do is we want to just scale the image so first we're going to give an initial value to that scale so we're going to go scale equals let's start with three for now just something random number three and we're gonna go image dot set scale so image dot or actually just image dot scale will work fine as well the way that image dot scale works is it scales by an offend by an offset and the way that set scale it, it sets the scale so you can set it smaller and bigger so we're gonna create it bigger but we should probably use we should probably use set scale just because we might want to create it smaller in the future set scale and we don't want to run into this issue later on we're going to keep it make it good from day one so uh, scale is the only two arguments we're going to give it is just scale and that line with semicolon okay so when we now have our platform displaying on the screen so that's working all good except we're not collision detecting it with them yet that's what we're going to cover in the next tutorial series so stay tuned for that should be coming out next week and again if any guys have any if any of you guys are interested in how i make my um, I would make my textures and sprites with GIMP. Just let me down the, down in the comment section, and if I feel there's enough interest in it, then I'll do a video on it. So, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave that down in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you next video. It's your Marty O.